25 years old, but at the time I was 22 and still attending college. I worked part-time at a restaurant in a very dodgy area, and I was always on the closing shift. It'd be very common for us to have homeless people coming in trying to use the bathroom or looking for some leftovers. They were usually quite harmless and understanding. Our boss wouldn't allow them to use the restroom though because of their poor hygiene. But from time to time and based on their looks, we would let them use the restroom. Our bathrooms were upstairs, meaning they'd have to climb a flight of stairs, and next to the bathroom was our storage room. So whenever we'd let homeless people use the bathroom, we'd really pay attention, and if necessary, we would knock on the door so they could leave. We had some incidents where sometimes they try to go into the storage room and we would have to physically throw them out. I was a waitress and when we were about to close, I checked the bathrooms and give them a quick clean. We would have a ton of clients coming in almost every day, but especially when it was summer. On a warm summer night, the restaurant was full inside and outside and I was working like an ant. I see a woman at the door looking for a table. I rush to meet her, and luckily I had found her a seat in five minutes. She was very nice, but there was something off with her. She was twitching, and she was always rubbing the palm of her hands on her jeans like she was sweating or something. I thought she was just nervous, maybe because she was alone in a crowded restaurant. I went to take her order. She ate normally, enjoyed her food, ate dessert, and after paying had asked to use the bathroom. She went upstairs and I eventually forgot all about her. A few hours passed and I was closing and checking everything. I went upstairs as usual and the women's bathroom door was locked. I yelled at my male coworkers to come upstairs because we have a problem. I honestly thought it was a homeless person that had barricaded themselves in there. We started pounding on the door and yelling for them to come out threatening to call the police. In hindsight, we should have called the police as soon as I saw the door locked. One of my coworkers managed to unlock the door and opened it. What we saw there will forever haunt my mind. There laying on the floor was the woman from earlier, with one needle stuck on her arm and two others next to her. I'm in the health field, so I jumped to check her pulse and I proceeded to do CPR on her. She was so heavy even though she was skinny. She was as cold as the floor. My coworkers were shocked and the lady that does the dishes had fainted. One of them called the emergency line and the other one was helping me and the lady. When the police and the paramedics finally arrived, I was exhausted from the CPR. They had started analyzing everything and proceeded to inform us that the woman had overdosed and that they'd take her to the hospital, but she was dead. I could feel tears streaming down my face. I was livid. I had spoken to her just a few hours ago, and I saw no clues about this, about what was going on with her. This event deeply traumatized me. I'm still on meds because I was so depressed after this. I couldn't sleep, and I basically couldn't leave the house out of fear of this happening again in some other way. I went to therapy for it, and it helped, and the medication helped as well. I stopped working there after a week of the event, and I never stepped foot in that restaurant again. It's been a year, and this still haunts me every day, seeing her face and feeling her cold, dead body. Please don't do drugs in general, but if you do so, don't do it in public places the people who will find you will be deeply scarred for life. I was working graveyard shift security at a local casino on the Las Vegas Strip, so I would see a lot of strange, wild, amusing, and crazy things. Every once in a while, we would get people who would take partying to an extreme level, and it ends up being an immense and stressful situation for me and my coworkers. Back in February of this year, we got a call on the radio about a woman looking for her husband, and soon after, someone had reported that there was a guy laying on the ground on the third floor of the guest parking garage. Along with a co-worker, 
I had walked around the floor and didn't see anything until I heard faint groans coming from underneath the car. When we finally found the guy, he was in shorts and a t-shirt. February in Vegas isn't terribly cold, but it's still somewhat cold, especially in the middle of the night. Anyway, we think that he had crawled underneath the car to try and get warm. We pulled him out and tried to wake him up. Then he gave a rattling breath and my coworker yelled, Holy shit, he's turning blue! We were both panicking, but fortunately training kicked in and I started chest compressions. He was a big guy, so I really had to push hard with my whole body weight. My supervisor soon arrived with an AED, which is Automated External Defibrillator, and after we hooked him up to it, shocks were not advised, so I continued compressions. Every time I finished a set and stopped to check his breathing, he started turning blue, so I continued for about 10 minutes before paramedics arrived and took over. They administered Narcan, and the guy finally woke up. He was evaluated and taken to a nearby hospital. Three days later, which I was off that night, him and his wife actually returned to the hotel to thank the security department for saving his life. It turned out that he had overdosed on narcotics and alcohol. Unfortunately, things don't always end as well as this, because less than three months later, a different guy OD'd and actually passed away doing the exact same thing. Please, please have fun responsibly. I'm thankful that I was in the right place at the right time to save someone, but that doesn't always happen, and it's not fair to us to deal with potentially life-threatening situations. Please be responsible when visiting Las Vegas. Hey everyone. I'm 25 years old, but the story happened when I was 22. I used to work the closing shift at a restaurant as a waitress. My apartment was close to that restaurant, and it'd be about a 15 minute walk, or I could take the subway and it'd be 5 minutes. It was a nice summer night. I had worked a lot and I needed to clear my head, so I figured I'd walk home. For context, I live in a calm and relatively safe city and country in general. We don't usually have reports of violent crimes, just the occasional drug addict burglar or drug dealing, but nothing too crazy. On my way home, I needed to cross a bridge. It's a very picturesque view, so I was enjoying the summer breeze while looking at the river that crossed under the bridge, when I noticed a man wearing all black coming in my direction. I think nothing of it, but I make a mental note about the man. After a few minutes, I had to cross paths with this man, as my shoulder almost brushes his because he didn't even move an inch, forcing me walking almost against the railings. The man turns and then slaps me across the face, like I was in complete and total shock to even react because I hadn't even looked at him. I stopped in my tracks momentarily and then just started walking fast again. Then I heard him running after me, and I froze. All I thought was, I'm going to die here today. He grabbed my arm, hugged me, and then said, I'm sorry, but thank God you didn't fight me back, because I have a knife in my pocket, and I would have used it way too fast. I just said back, I just want to go home. Please let me go. And he let go of me, then saying, I'm so sorry, I'm just so fucked up, and then started running. I ran so fast just to get out of there. I got to the other side and called my boyfriend, telling him everything that happened and asking for him to meet me. I think the guy was under some serious shit or was having some kind of psychosis, because I've never seen someone behave like that before. I went home and took a long shower. I never saw that druggie again, thank God, but it really made me want to never walk alone again, especially at night. Now whenever I need to walk somewhere, I try to be on the phone with someone, or else I'll just have a major panic attack. Thank you all for listening to my story, and remember, always be aware of your surroundings 
and avoid walking alone at night. Hey everyone, before we cover this next story, I need to mention some things. The story was already narrated in a previous video, but the center sent an update, a part two. So I'm gonna be including both parts since they're connected. If you don't wanna hear the first part, I'll have a timestamp down in the pinned comment and you can just skip to the update. But as a little recap, the story is basically about an older woman who constantly talked about her sex life, as well as tried to get the sender of the story to talk about her own, even pushing her to meet her very much older fiance. Very creepy all around. That's the recap for those who don't wanna re-listen. For everyone else who still wants to hear both parts, let's begin. I'm a female in my early 20s, and I'm working part-time in a clothing shop while studying at university. I love my job, but there's one coworker that I just cannot stand, and things have been slowly getting worse. I'll call this coworker Alice, and her fiancé Jay. I'll describe them briefly. Alice is 50 and very masculine. She has very short hair and wears men's clothing, which I have no issue with. Jay is 68 and he has a walking stick and is extremely tall. Alice has missing teeth and smells horrible. Jay smells bad too, but at least he has all his teeth. They both have rough accents and I can tell they're originally from a rough area of the city that we reside in. Now on with the story. When I first met Alice, she completely ignored my attempts to introduce myself, which I found incredibly rude. I met her four more times, and every time she completely ignored me, just stared at me. One day she came in to speak to my manager about something, and my other coworker who I'll call Beth, Beth asked me in front of Alice if I'd ever met Alice, and I said yes, that I'd said hello to her a few times. Petty, I know, but it wasn't me that was the problem, and Alice was pissing me off. Well, Beth introduced us, and Alice stared at us both, not really saying anything. Beth said how long I'd been working there, and Alice again said nothing. At this point, Beth had stared at us both and tried a few more times. On the sixth attempt, Alice finally acknowledged me. The whole time she was in the stockroom area which is behind the tills and she stared at me. I could feel her eyes on me and every time I turned around she was staring. I found it creepy and Beth told me it was weird that Alice was so rude and standoffish with me. She told me that Alice's personality is very loud and bold and she's not shy at all. I'm always weary of gossiping, so I didn't say too much, just agreed that it was weird. I had already decided that I didn't like Alice, but that I'd have to be civil. I'd see her in the street sometimes when I was waiting on the bus home from uni. I commute and don't live on campus. Every time I saw her and she saw me and would just gawp at me. I told my friends and they told me that she seemed fascinated by me. I didn't really see how that could be the case, but she clearly had some problems with me. I saw her twice with a tall man who I later learned was her partner, Jay. She only worked one day a week, so I didn't work with her, but then she changed her shifts and she started working two days with me. I really tried to be nice, but it was hard. The first time we were working together, she sort of acknowledged that she ignored me before. She told me that she remembered seeing me around and then stared at me. She started talking very fast and I was honestly surprised she wasn't ignoring me. She told me a bunch of stuff about her personal life. How she has a fiance named Jay and he's 68 and she's 50. I told her it was nice that she had someone who made her happy because she told me he was her whole world. She suddenly got aggressive out of nowhere saying, yeah, I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. We don't give a fuck. I was very taken aback by this. I hadn't said anything at all judgmental or negative. I said she shouldn't care, that as long as they're happy it's no one's business. She stared at me again, 
and I felt uneasy. She then began telling me about her sex life with him, and I felt awkward as hell. I don't want to say my age, but I'm only in my early 20s. I've had my experiences, but I just feel awkward talking about sex with older people. It's different if we're close friends, but I didn't know Alice, and here she was going into extreme detail about her sex life. She told me that even though she's masculine, she really loves being submissive, and she loves when Jay takes her home and does it rough. I tried to just nod and be polite, but I was uncomfortable. When I went home later that night, I had started to wonder if I was being silly. I mean, we all are adults here. Maybe this was normal and I was just being too reserved, but I couldn't ignore that it just felt really weird. On our next shift together, we had some slinky dresses to sort through. This excited Alice, and she kept saying how she wanted to buy it all for Jay. She told our other coworker that she should buy some for her boyfriend, and that it was a woman's job to be sexy for her man. This honestly made me roll my eyes. It irritated me because I don't think it's a woman's job to be sexy for a guy, boyfriend or not. She asked me if I had a partner, and I stupidly told her no, which was true. She quizzed me further, and I ended up telling her that I've been single for about a year now. She just stared at me. That whole day she made sexual jokes, and most of them weren't even funny. And again, started talking to me all about her sex life. She tended to say all this to me and not my other coworker, which I picked up on. Every time I was working with her, she just annoyed me. She would constantly fart right next to me and tell me she had to take a dump. She smelled really disgusting too, like damp mold. I noticed that she had some missing teeth as well. She kept telling me that she was so masculine, yet she has a man and loves being submissive and I didn't understand why she kept going on about it. I mean, I could see that she's masculine, and it should be obvious I don't care, because I'm nothing but polite to her, and her having a man is fine. She started being aggressive with some of our other coworkers, screaming at someone that she wanted her shift changed once, even after he told her he'd change it. One time she was talking about Jay, and she told me his children aren't in his life. She told me that his daughters were selfish bitches, and she actually called his ex-wife the sea slur for a woman. This all sounded like red flags to me, but it's her life, I guess. She told me that his daughters wanted money off of him, and his ex wanted him back, but apparently Jay told them, Nah, Alice is way better than you guys, and she's sexier. I actually had to suck up my cheeks to stop laughing at that. It reads like something a 10-year-old would write. She was so embarrassing and sometimes her relationship sounded like a Wattpad fan fiction. She then began ranting about his ex and children and how much she hated them all. Then she went on a homophobic rant seemingly out of nowhere, insulting gay men and calling them slurs. This made me angry and I flat out ignored her at this point because I didn't want to get into a fight. Now, I really disliked Alice from the beginning pretty much, but this homophobic rant was the final nail in the coffin. It was then that I knew that she was definitely a truly disgusting person that I never wanted to be around. Also, she's shouting all of this in a store where anyone could hear. It was so uncomfortable. She was acting like a menace. I said that I had to go to the bathroom, and I head out there for a few minutes. When I got out, she had to go and take a dump, and she literally stunk up the shop. When she came out, she told me that I'd made it smell good in the bathroom. This had creeped me out because it sounded kind of pervy, but I tried to rationalize it by telling myself she meant my perfume lingered in the stall, but I doubt it. When I left work that day an hour before her, she told me, You're alright, sweetheart, which also skeeved me out. The weeks that passed and she was the same, constantly talking about her sex life in too much detail. She then actually started quizzing me about my own, and I told her I didn't feel comfortable discussing that with her. She got aggressive, and she told me I was being prissy, which pissed me off. I don't see how it's bad to not want to tell some random woman about your sex life. 
Then she asked me if I wanted to hang out outside of work with her and Jay. Before I could even answer, she asked if I'd met Jay. I stuttered that I wasn't sure. I mean I'd seen him, but we hadn't met. She then told me aggressively, You have met him. We've seen you. Tall guy with a walking stick. Yeah, you've seen us out before. I again felt awkward. Why was she so aggressive and out of the blue at times? And why was she acting like a cop interrogating me? I just said back, Yeah, I've seen him around, I guess. She stared at me. She asked me again if I wanted to go to the pub with them. I told her no, and she asked me why. Who asks that? It also seemed kind of weird that a 50-year-old woman would want a girl of my age hanging out with her and her fiancé. I said I was too busy. Then she scoffed and said, I have a hard time believing a young girl like you is too busy on a weekend to go out. Her rudeness made me angry, and I told her I was busy that night, and that was it. I actually said it with an edge to my voice, and it seemed to shut her up. From that day on, though, she kept asking me to hang out. I had told my friends about it, and one of them told me it sounded like they were trying to set up a threesome between us. I thought that she was joking, but she was dead serious. She told me that Alice seemed very weird and creepy, and to stay away from her. The more I thought about it, the more I actually wondered if she's onto something. I mean, Alice does tell me specifically about her and Jay's sex life, and it's constant and detailed. There was also an incident where she told me her breast size and asked for mine. I refused to tell her and she got mad. She stares at me all the time as well, but I've never met Jay face to face. It makes me feel sick to think about. My boss is very accommodating to my uni schedule, so I asked to swap my shifts around so I wouldn't be on with Alice anymore. I told her I needed the switch due to uni, and she shifted things around for me. I've not worked with Alice since, and I'm really doing my best to avoid her, especially being alone with her. If she ever tries anything, I'm ready to defend myself. I've also decided that I need to be more firm and maybe even rude towards her whenever she starts her nonsense. I never want her to have an opportunity to do anything creepy if that really is her intention. It's scary to think that she might be up to something, considering that she's so much older than me and she's so aggressive, and her fiancé seems just as much of a weirdo as she is. I just hope she never tries anything, and I'm sharing this story to remind people to never be polite to anyone who's acting weird towards you, as it really can encourage them. It needs to be nipped in the bud right away. I just hope Alice leaves me alone from now on, but if she doesn't, I'll tell our manager, because I won't let her do anything messed up to me. This whole situation has just been really stressful, but I'm glad that for now she's not been able to get at me. I just hope it stays that way. I was able to avoid Alice for a glorious two weeks, but with Christmas fast approaching, she ended up being put on the same shifts as me again. We simply needed more hands on deck as I work in a charity shop for children, so we get extremely busy. The fact that it's a charity shop actually becomes relevant later. Well, as soon as Alice saw me, she loudly declared she doesn't wear underwear. I don't even know what to say, and it took me several seconds to respond. She then told me that she wasn't currently wearing underwear, and she loved the feeling. I felt uncomfortable, and I was thinking if a man said something like that, it would be frowned upon. Yet Alice gets away with it. Her behavior was the same as always, but one day one of my colleagues pulled me aside. She told me that our manager had told her that when they were out for a cigarette that she would be confronting Alice because she suspected Alice of stealing money. I was shocked. I thought Alice was a weirdo, but I had never expected her to steal from a charity shop, especially one for kids. It just isn't something many people would do. Even common thieves seem to be above that. Well, fast forward, and my manager did confront Alice. Alice was called into the office, and they were in there for a very long time, like an hour. When Alice came out, she was red in the face and silent. 
The tension was thick in the air, and my manager announced that Alice would not be using the cash register today, and then requested that me and my other colleague operate the register all day. Alice was silent the rest of the shift, and she kept glaring at me whenever she passed by. It was uncomfortable, and we all wanted to know if she would be fired, but we were too scared to ask. My colleague and I whispered to each other about the situation, just speculating. Our manager watched Alice like a hawk as she handled stock. After this shift, Alice wasn't in for a few days. The colleague who had told me about her being accused of stealing told me that apparently Alice had been getting watched for the past four months. Apparently it started off as small amounts of money going missing, but had then escalated to significant amounts. Apparently she was accused of money going missing on 50 separate occasions. About five days passed, and she was back in for a shift, and we had six of us in the store due to how busy we were with deliveries, as well as putting up Christmas decor. Well, eventually we had to do the banking. If anyone isn't familiar, it involves going into a bank across the street. Alice piped up and said she wanted to do it, and then one of our colleagues stopped what she was doing and said to Alice, Yeah, as if you'd be allowed to do it. When she said this, Alice went bright red and then glared at her colleague. She stormed away to the bathroom and was gone for like 15 minutes. It was so awkward. A little while after this, she started shouting at one of our colleagues to whip her, and she literally bent over and slapped her own ass. She had found a belt in the pile of clothing she was going through and was actually slapping it around in the air behind her. I couldn't even hide the horrified look on my face as I then exchanged glances with the girl she was saying this to, and Alice noticed. She then stood up and stared right at me, then said, Yeah, there's someone I'd love to use this with, and it ain't Jay. This really freaked me out, but I was really scared to say anything. She then started shouting that her fiancé was on Viagra, and then told us all about the dosage he needed and how she came home the night before and he was sitting naked waiting for her, and how she couldn't work well because she was in pain from getting busy all night. I was honestly growing sick of all this outlandish shit she was always saying to us. It was like she purposely wanted us to feel uncomfortable. I was ranting about her to some of my friends outside of work, and one of them joked that she was probably a swinger. I still can't discount that theory even now. I think that she thought she was getting away with stealing, so she became more confident again, although she wasn't really at work as often as before. Well, fast forward to a few more weeks, and I go into work as usual, praying that Alice won't be there. Well, on this day, our area manager as well as our regular manager was in the store. As me and my colleagues stood at the register, we had heard our manager call Alice requesting she come in. My colleague and I stared at each other, eager to know more. About an hour later, and Alice was entering the store, and she walked up to us. I had said hello to her, but she just glared at me, not saying anything back in return. Typical. My colleague greeted her, and this time she responded with a hi. My colleague had asked her how she was, and she had started ranting about how she was in pain from Jay, and I just switched off, not wanting to hear this shit again. After a while, she was called into the office, and the door was closed. A few minutes passed, when all I heard was Alice shouting, What the fuck? You're both fucking blaming me? Followed by our area manager saying loudly, We're trying to have a discussion with you. My colleague and I were whispering to each other, and honestly, really trying to listen through the door. The discussion went on for like 40 minutes or so, and then Alice suddenly stormed out of the office. She walked past us and shouted, I need a fucking cigarette now! And my colleague then turned to me and said, Yeah, I'll go out with her. Well, a while later, they both come back into the shop, and my calling looked like she was desperate to talk to me, but obviously couldn't. Alice stood next to us, and she started ranting, saying, 
this outcome better be good, and just cursing like a sailor and ranting on and on. Well, eventually she was called back into the office. I don't know how long she was in there, but then suddenly, the door to the office flew open and then slammed shut. I could have sworn that the whole damn building actually shook. Alice stormed out of the shop, and as she left, it sounded like she was gasping. My colleague rushed after her, and I then heard Alice moments later literally screaming in the street. She was screaming. I've done fuck all! I didn't fucking do anything! Not a fucking thing! Then I heard loud sobs. My colleague was out there less than five minutes, telling me that she tried to ask what was wrong, and Alice started screaming. She said that she then kicked a lamppost and started running along the street, with everyone in the street just staring at her dumbfounded. Well, she then told me earlier that when they were having their cigarette outside, that Alice had said our manager was accusing her of stealing, and that it simply just wasn't true. My colleague was bold enough to start asking questions, and Alice contradicted herself. She said that at first that she hadn't stolen any money, and that they had no proof and it wasn't true. However, once in the office, my boss and area manager presented her with cold hard proof that was undeniable, showing her taking money. She was accused of stealing triple figures. Well, my colleague said that Alice then started saying it was all a mistake and that she had simply overcharged customers for items. I said that didn't make any sense and wasn't that her basically admitting to it? My colleague just said that Alice was a psycho and that she stormed out because she had indeed been fired. I couldn't help but grin at this. I know it might sound bad, but she got what she fucking deserved. She really did. I mean, who steals from charity? There are so many moral levels here, especially as it's a children's charity. The area manager eventually came out of the office and left. She had only been there to fire Alice or to help my manager do it. Our manager spoke to us after a few hours had gone by, and she said that Alice had been terminated. We didn't let on all that we knew, but she told us that she'd been caught stealing and they had no choice but to let her go. When I wrote my story about Alice being a creep the first time, I never expected such developments to take place, especially in a month. But as I write this, it's been one month since, and now Alice is finally out of my life. I'm so glad about that. I really hope I never meet someone as creepy and disgusting as her ever again. Thank you all for listening to my story. If I'm being honest, meeting Alice has made me realize I need to get better at calling people out because I let her run her mouth way too much. But you live and you learn. And she really got her karma that day. And I got mine by being able to witness it happening. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone, and remember, to always, stay.